Hello there, Leos. Welcome to your tarot reading. So thank you so much for joining me today. Um, before I start going into this reading, I just want to preface this. I believe this is about love and relationship. Okay, so it doesn't seem like there is um, there there are indicators that it could be you know work and, and and finance and things like that. So I'm just going to read what I see. Uh, however, the energy as well can be vice versa. So if you're dealing with someone versus, you know, uh, cross watchers, if you're dealing with a Leo, um, I hope this reading resonates with you. And I hope that whatever messages, advice, guidance that you can get out of this um, would be helpful for you as we transition away from January into the month of February. So thank you for joining me. Um, first of all, I feel like the title of this reading is going to be like more than meets the eye. So when I was shuffling out the spread, um, I saw a woman and this looks like, you know, um, what, 17, 1800s in the wild west uh, at a saloon. Okay. So a saloon, a bar, and there are cowboys. There are also um, wenches in the bar. So I see this woman, she's very, um, she's got like black hair. She has darker skin. She looks very exotic, uh, possibly like Native American and something else. She looks really exotic and she has like uh, dark hair, curly dark hair. And she's wearing those um, uh, outfits with the corset and the uh, big poofy, you know, uh, skirt. And um, so like she just looks like she doesn't belong there. She looks like she might be, um, I don't know, somebody that um, like an escort. Okay, that's a nice way of saying it. She looks like she might be an escort or a prostitute or whatever you want to call it. And so I see as well, she's like looking, she's at the bar waiting for, you know, a client or a customer or whatever you have, what, what have you. And then these three really rough looking men, they come into the bar and they lay their eyes on her, right? And she's there by herself and she's just very dainty, very delicate, very pretty. And so they come over and harass her and she kind of sees them coming she doesn't really flinch they talk to her and they try to grab her by the wrist and at this time um under her hoops dress she pulls out a tiny little gun and then she shoots them so that's what i saw and it was really interesting because um the scene doesn't really um show me like any type of blood or it doesn't show me like you know whether or not they're still alive but either way I feel like they came in expecting something and it's like they mess with the wrong person that's what it feels like to me okay and the reason why I feel like this might be a relationship reading is um, I feel that you know there's judgment cast here and uh, I feel like somebody made a bad judgment call Okay, somebody thought that um, it was going to be an easy uh, takeover. Somebody thought that, oh, you know, I've got this in the bag. And then little did they know that the situation turned around and it was not in their favor. Um, I feel like somebody misjudged a situation. Somebody misjudged another person. Somebody thought that um, it's just like a, a wrong assessment. Okay, it's like underestimating somebody or making a wrong judgment call about another person all right so that that's like pretty much the theme of what i was picking up and then i also felt like it was very much relationship um oriented because of the cards that have fallen out so let me talk a little bit about these two cards prominently we want to just get them out of the way and see what messages come out for them that way we can clear them up and then we can kind of like make room for more things so when I was shuffling out the cards, I feel like the reading is split this way, okay? This is in the past, this is where you are right now, and this is what's in store for you in the future. That's what it feels like to me. And so, let me talk about this. I have here the Three of Swords. The Three of Swords indicates, um, not in this deck though, um, it basically indicates a separation from another person, okay? A separation from another person. And uh, once again, I'm just going to read this energy as um, the way it flows because, you know, pick a side, whichever side you fall on, most likely the partner is on the other side. Um, I feel like there has been a separation between you and another person. 
and uh, I almost feel like between you and another person, um, you might have been waiting for their return. They might have been waiting for your return. So I feel like it was a situation where there was a falling out and it happened so fast and it, it, it's like turning on a dime, okay? Like that, uh, those rough guys in the saloon, um, they grabbed this woman by the wrist and she wasn't having it. And little did they know, it's like she wasn't playing around, you know? And so I feel like it, it's a situation where um, if it was like an argument, if it was a fight, if it was a falling out, it escalated very, very, very quickly. And I feel that it happened so fast that neither of you were aware of what was happening. Okay? And I feel that it, it, it just happened so fast. And before you know it, the situation was like full blown, I guess, conflict. And then I also feel like now that, you know, you and the other person have had time to cool down, both parties have not been in communication and both parties were kind of like, now that you, you're away from it, now that you're calmer, now that the adrenaline is not racing, and now that you have a little bit of distance and perspective, both of you are wondering like, you know, what exactly happened? How did things escalate so fast? How did, you know, what started out supposedly, like what started out as a, a joke? How did it get out of control? Like how did the situation go haywire? And I feel that uh, you think they owe you an apology, okay? And um, I feel that you're scanning the horizon, trying to figure out, you know, try to see what they're doing, trying to see if they're coming back, uh, trying to figure out what they're up to, trying to figure, figure out where they are, and trying to also figure out, you know, what you should do about the situation. So I feel like physically, you might not be in contact with this person, once again, the um, Three of Swords, it indicates like physical distance, emotional distance, a rift, uh, a falling out, a situation that was quite painful. And I feel like for some of you, um, you're waiting for them to return. For others of you, I feel like this could also be like a long distance relationship where you're waiting for somebody to come into the picture. So I have here the Three of Wands, and this is your energy, this giraffe here. In the traditional right away deck, um, it's the the man on the the hill. He's got like he he's got like two wands behind him, I feel, and then there's one wand that he's holding on his right hand, and it's a depiction of your ships are coming in, right? So the stereotypical interpretation of that is waiting for your ships to come in, waiting for something to come into the picture, waiting for the payout, waiting for this moment where there's contact, there's communication, and for the arrival of another person. But what has happened here is we have the journey, okay? This is the Six of Swords. This is sailing to a safer place. And there is, I love the way this is depicted because there's so much serenity associated with it, okay? The blue color, the dragonfly, the calmness, the stillness, the, um, the serenity. And so I feel like you took a giant leap away from this situation. Um, there might have been months or weeks or a lot of time that have elapsed between the last time you interacted with this person. I feel like they're trying to figure out like um, what you're up to, what are you doing, where are you right now, who are you with, are you going to apologize? What should they say to you? I, I feel those things. I feel those emotions um, coming in for them from their end. They're showing up here as the High Priestess. And I have here intuition and sacred knowledge. Okay? So I feel like there's still a very strong emotional connection between the two of you. And I feel like they're wondering, you know, what you're up to. So I feel like there was a situation here that happened really, really fast. And before you know it, it was like full blown um, conflict. And 
I feel a lot of it might have been ideological differences. Okay, um, differences over upbringing, differences over belief system, differences over, um, I, I feel for some of you, political affiliation. Um, I'm also, it's a hot contentious topic here in the United States, but I, I do feel the words are uh, coming out. Political affiliation, political alignment, um, even like, you know, religion. I feel like it's, um, these are really important, important topics. And I feel that the way that you both have this conversation or whenever this conversation came out, it started out very, very quickly. And then because of your ideological, like deeply ingrained ideological differences, I feel that it, it turned into conflict and you could not see eye to eye. And a lot of the times, okay, being a fixed sign as yourself, um, you might be dealing with another fixed sign. So fixed signs are Leo, um, Scorpio, Taurus, and Aquarius. A lot of the times with fixed signs, we strongly, strongly identify very strongly with our belief system. And we often feel that um, if someone disagrees with our beliefs, they disagree with us as a human being. And we also feel like because we identify so strongly with our belief system, our beliefs are an extension of ourselves. So if someone disagrees, it means they're not accepting us as a person. And so we can't help but, you know, have this visceral, like gut wrenching reaction whenever somebody disagrees with us. And I feel like that might be what happened here. It's like, you're not backing down, they're not backing down, and at the end of the day, it created this rift between the two of you. And I feel that you're still looking at each other. I feel that you're wondering, you know, did they move away? Have they gotten over me? Are they, um, are they gone for good? Are they gonna be coming back? Are they going to apologize? And I feel like, I feel like innately, there wasn't a lot of compatibility between the two of you, but we don't have to be compatible with another person in order to be with them or in order to love them. Uh, what I feel here is um, with this three of swords, look at that moth, okay? It's like a moth being drawn to the flame, okay? It's in their DNA. It's, it's what they're designed or, or bred to do, okay? Drawn to the shiny objects. So I feel like the person that you're dealing with might be the moth. And as a fire sign, of course, you are the flame. So it, it's sort of like they're very, very drawn to you because of how different you guys are. And then I also feel like their admiration of you really feeds your ego. You like the way they looked at you. You like to be seen with this person. You like the, um, it, it's like they're, when you're with them, you feel a lot more confident. You feel a lot more complete. You feel a lot more appreciated and, and things like that. So I feel like it's a, um, potentially like at its best, it's a very uplifting type of a relationship. At its worst, there are a lot of ideological differences down to the way that you know you make the bed down to the way that you do your laundry so i feel i feel like you know one person's always on time the other person's always late like it it, it narrows down to all of these key things that um that are required when two people you know have to share space have to be in a relationship have to work alongside each other and I feel that it has been very difficult. Once again, uh, let me explain this giraffe imagery. I didn't finish it earlier, but I did explain this to the previous slide, which is cancer. Um, so, you know, it's the man waiting for his ship to come in, waiting for, for something to come into the picture, right? Waiting, waiting, waiting. And um, look at the giraffe. They have a really long neck, right? It basically um, allows them to look further and and um and see things at a distance where other land animals cannot okay 
So I feel like you have the gift of foresight. You have the gift of long-term planning. You're not impulsive like the other fire signs. Aries and Sagittarius are extremely impulsive. Um, you don't have that that impulsiveness that they have, which you know often get them in trouble. Um, and I also feel like you you know plan things out and methodically you you do things, plan things out, and you kind of like play it out in your mind before you rush into something. And then I also feel like the other person, you know, they might take a different approach. They might have been like, let's jump in first and then ask questions later. I feel like the other person also, um, they pride themselves on their intelligence, okay? When they believe something and you attack their beliefs, they see it as an attack on their intelligence. When they uh, uh, choose a course of action, I feel like they are very um, adamant about, you know, sticking to it. And then when you poke holes in their theories or if you, you know, tell them, oh, you know, here is a potential pitfall, I feel like rather than accepting that as, oh, you know, warning, I feel like they take offense and then, then I also feel like they, um, they think that you're undermining their intelligence. So I feel like there are uh, a lot of ego conflict here in this situation. But I feel like, you know, with this giraffe imagery, I feel that you have the gift of uh, insight and, and foresight. And as a result of that, I'm, I'm sensing that you're scanning the horizon and you're looking to see where this person is and whether or not they're coming back. And I feel that one of the main things that you have been thinking about is, uh, did they move away from me? Have they forgotten me? Did they leave me behind? And then I also feel like maybe there has been a lot of, you know, breakups and makeup and breakups and makeups and just this cyclical pattern. Uh, you're wondering as well, you know, oh, they'll be back. They'll be back. You know, maybe one day they'll come back. And so I don't feel like it's over. Okay. So this happened in the past. <clears throat> Let's talk about the present situation. There is a diminishing here in the rift, the distance, the conflict. So I feel like this person is definitely making a comeback for the month of February. We have here the Ten of Swords. And thank God it's de-escalating and then the Nine of Swords. And both of these cards are not, you know, pretty cards to get. But I feel like there's a situation that is getting better and better with time, okay? Um, I just want to say, Leos, um, and you know, you, you know where you stand in this. Or you could be cross-watching for a Leo person and, and you know, what, wherever you're coming from, I would say... If you feel like, you know, this resonates with you, one of the easiest segue into the, to, to communicating again with that person or to break the ice with the other person is uh, simply, you know, send a text message or an email or whatever, however you communicate and just tell the other person, you know, just because I disagree with you it doesn't mean I'm attacking you, so I, I please don't take it personally. Or, you know, even saying like, I know we don't agree on a lot of things, but we can't let a disagreement, an ideological disagreement, you know, get in the way of our friendship, get in the way of our relationship. Whatever it is, I feel like that would go a long way to kind of like bridge the distance men that rift and break the ice between you and the other person okay so i hope that's helpful for somebody out there um so there is a de-escalation here of conflict the emotional rift is being bridged between you and the person okay you're still very much on guard about each other so we have here Ten of Swords. This is a snake, right? And snakes, they're very good about self-preservation, right? And, um, you know, they, they scan their environment. They have very good situation, uh, situational awareness. They also have very, very good senses. 
And then I also feel like, you know, if they feel threatened, they can very quietly slither away, okay? And then also the other person we have here, the Nine of Swords. This is a porcupine with quills, with things that, you know, um, with things that, that they have covering them, around them for self-defense, okay? So I feel like both parties are still very much like on the defense about one another. And then if you're like that beautiful woman in the saloon and, you know, some rough people are coming at you, or even, you know, if somebody has treated you wrong and now they're coming back at you, I feel that you have your, you have your weapons, you have your, 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 your method of self-protection, okay? So I, I do feel like when this conversation happens, um, it's going to require both parties to be kind of like upfront and honest and not aggressive. Okay, so aim to be as like non-threatening, non-aggressive, as best as you can. And I feel like, you know, once again, it takes two to, to tangle. And so if the other person is coming at you aggressively and especially grabbing you, touching you and, you know, trying to have their way with you, I, I do feel that you're going to give them a piece of your mind and you're not going to... You're not going to let that situation slide, okay? And then I also feel like with the other person too, if you come at them very aggressively, um, I feel like they're going to match the aggression. And so there's potential here to de-escalate. So in this connection, both parties need to kind of like act from their higher vantage point or from that, you know, from their higher self and come into this very calm, very collected and you know just talk rather than letting hands and and things like that body language and whatever do the talking so i feel like it's a very fragile situation and it needs to be handled with care and it needs to be handled with kitty gloves and it needs to be handled in a very um delicate way okay so that means soft voices, soft body language. Um, and a lot of the times, you know, as a fiery, fiery, passionate sign, uh, we pour our entire being into the things that we do, the things that we say, the things that we believe in. And at a drop of a hat, we can explode and we can, you know, get very defensive and we can also lash out. And once again, I feel like you're dealing with another person who is uh, just as passionate, who is just, just as opinionated, who is just as stubborn, who is just as prideful. And so we can't, you know, fight fire with fire here. Okay. And once again, I'm not saying that, you know, you have to make up with this person. But I feel that you're wondering what they're up to and I feel that you're thinking. And then I also feel for many of you, you're kind of fed up as well. And so depending on where you fall on the spectrum, I just feel like maybe coming back to this person right now might not be the best option because you're still very hot-headed. You're still, you know, you, you still have a lot of adrenaline in your veins. But I do feel that you're wondering what they're up to. Okay. So this is where, this is like the outcome here, the last um, four cards. I feel that there's a situation swooping in, okay? So for some of you, we have here the Ace of Wands. So this is like really, really strong passion. Something that is really giving you, um, you know, it, it's stirring you from the inside. It, it's making you feel alive again. It's making you feel 
the passion, the the raw excitement. So this is something that is very much like it's understandable, and it's something that is a lot more in alignment with you. So I feel like you know this person really stirs up. You know, you have like such a gut reaction to them, the way that they are, the things that they do. For some of you, it could be like someone who's your uh, opposite. Like、uh, an Aquarius, for example. For others of you, it could be another fixed sign, just somebody who is quite stubborn. Okay. And then for others of you, I do feel like. I do feel like this might be, you know, like a long-term relationship partner. You might be married to them. You might have a relationship with them. And I say that because we have here the Four of Wands. And then the shaman, which is like the higher font. So I feel like this is definitely a relationship here,、um, or like a situation where you're living together. Hence, you're interacting on such a regular basis. And then I feel like you know the passion is really strong, but so is the、um, the dissonance between the two of you. There's great passion. There's great chemistry. There is also great、uh, lack of compatibility. And so this re relationship requires a lot more work. Okay, it requires a lot more vulnerability. I would say vulnerability is、um, is how we are able to counteract the ego, the amped up ego energy、um, displayed in you know the spread. So I feel like that's what's happening. Somebody is very hard headed. And then the other person is like, I mean, it's a turn on, but also it's a turn off. It's a turn on when it's、uh, about mutual things, like things that you both are passionate about. But it's also a turn off when you're trying to work together as a unit and you can't agree on things. And it's especially a turn off if one person takes offense that the other person doesn't do what they're asked or doesn't do what they're advised to do. Doesn't take advice or doesn't heed advice, and so I feel like if it's a long-standing relationship,、uh, couples therapy might be very beneficial for the two of you, because I feel like all it, and I don't want to downplay this, but you know, from an outsider's perspective looking in, we can see what's wrong with the relationship, whereas the people who are in the relationship, it's harder for them to see because they're looking at things a little bit, you know, more object,、uh, subjectively. And so I feel like you know, in order, it, like couples counseling, couples therapy, would be able to flip the script a little bit, to to allow you to put yourselves in their shoes and to allow them to put themselves in your shoes, to know where you're coming from, to know where they're coming from, and to have like a different perspective when you're dealing with each other. That way, it's kind of like that light bulb moment. Where the two of you start to see eye to eye, it's like role reversal. You know, step into each other's shoes for a day and see what it's like on the other side. And so I feel like couples therapy. I even feel like you know, just having a very、um, real talk with one another, drop the ego and drop the act, and it's going to be very enlightening. Okay, there is a lot of passion here. Um, I feel like it's lacking in love, but it doesn't mean that it's not there, or it can't be built, or it can't be established. I just feel like there's a lot of raw energy, like passion and chemistry. So the the the、uh, connection is very dynamic, and no wonder you're so drawn to this person, and no wonder this person is so drawn to you, because like it feels to me like pure adrenaline. And I feel very strongly for some of you, you might be dealing with an air sign, so like an Aquarius, a Gemini, or a Libra. And what I'm seeing here is this: the Hierophant and the Eight of Wands. Okay, Eight of Acorns, Eight of Eight of Wands. 
The eight of wands is communication, contact, and the the ego is swooping in. So this means there's going to be communication. It's going to be happening very, very fast. I feel like they're going to, like this, timidly ask you about something. Do you miss me? Do you want to see me? Can I still see you? And then I feel like you're upset and I feel that you're going to, you know, tell them something that will kind of like um, make them take a step back. So you meant it one way, but I feel like it's going to come out a different way. And then they feel a little bit hurt or they, f they feel overlooked or they feel d dismissed. And so I feel like they're going to slither away. So there's like opportunities here for there's opportunities here for reconciliation and, you know, communication, really opening up that channel of communication. But I'm sensing that they're testing the waters. They're very shy and for they're going to reach out and say something that makes them feel quite embarrassed or even vulnerable. And I feel like you have your pride and you might you know turn it into a joke or you might jokingly try to break the ice with them but they misinterpret it and then they feel like you're taking a shot at them and so there's a lot of um, you know opportunities here for misunderstandings as well okay um, Never, never, ever respond to a message, an email, a text message, a phone call when we're upset, okay? And um, if somebody ever reveals to us, you know, um, an emotion, okay? Let's just say, I'm feeling very sad today. And this is not somebody that does that on a, reg on a regular basis. So all of a sudden, if they're saying like, I really miss you, or you know, I wish things weren't like this between us. It's a very deep revelation when it comes to emotions, right? They're making themselves vulnerable. They're expressing how they feel. And if we take a, 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 sh like a cheap shot at how somebody feels, it can be very wounding. It can be very hurtful. And so I feel like you know, once again, the energy could be reversed. You might feel like, you know, every time you try to show them affection or every time you try to, you know, be vulnerable with them and, and show them how you really feel, they might, you know, take a jab at you. You might feel that way too. So what I'm feeling here is um, there's a need here or there will be communication. And however the two of you choose to handle this, I feel like it's a, a still like an ongoing challenge, but keep in mind, it's not really a conflict that you're dealing with another person. Whenever there's conflict, I feel like it has a lot more to do with the self, okay? The way we express ourselves, the way in which we can forgive others, the way in which we can release or hold on to resentment, and the ways in which we kind of let our ego overpower um, overpower everything else pretty much and so once again uh, Leos please don't get offended this reading it, it goes vice versa but I feel like you're dealing with someone who's also very stubborn and I feel that they really value their intelligence and I'm sensing that if you disagree with their plans or, or if you um, poke holes in their theories or if you you know undermine the things that they they think or the things that they say or ideas that they have they might take it as an attack on their intelligence and then likewise if they disagree with your ideas and your plans they you might take it as an attack on you as a person and so i feel like there's a lot of growth that needs to be had when it comes to, you know, mending this relationship. So like growth, when it comes to personal awareness, self-awareness, uh, being aware of the other person, being aware of their needs, being able to, you know, really approach each other without the, the, the facade of the ego, okay? I hope this reading is helpful. Um, 
Let me see if we can pull out like, let's do one more card. What is your spiritual advice here for Leo's for the month of February? February 2020. Advice here for Leo's, please. Just need one card. Okay. So we have here the King of Wands, King of Acorns. This is you in your power. This is very raw energy. It's very triumphant. And it's like daring. It's bold and I don't feel like it can be conquered, okay? So I have your optimism and innovation, okay? Um, so in terms of like serving as a spiritual advice for you, let's look at the qualities, the traditional qualities of the King of uh, Wands. The King of Wands is somebody that, um, he, he, he's a king, so of course he, he rules over other people. He waits for people to come to him and uh, people pay tribute to the king the king doesn't go out and and you know mingle with the peasants and and things like that okay so i mean it doesn't mean that he can't it just means that you know he's in his power he owns his throne and the the people are going to come and pay tribute to him okay what i feel they're saying here is uh, i do feel this is a very heated debate or discussion or argument or whatever it is that you're dealing with with the other person and i feel like as much as you might want to communicate it is best for you to wait for the other person to come to you okay for them to collect their their thoughts together for them to you know show uh or or even come up with a game plan or even lay out some type of a strategy as to how to break the ice with you. I feel like in this situation, it would be best for them to come to that state of uh, being ready and then, you know, coming to you. Okay, so don't go out chasing after this person. Okay, and then I also feel it says here optimism. And what it's really telling me is uh, a lot of fire signs in general. Uh, fire signs, we get mad very quickly, but we get over things very quickly. When we're mad, we can be very explosive, okay? It's like zero to 60 in like a split second. We can get very upset, but then once everything is out in the open, we forgive and we move on, okay? We understand that life is very, very short and we understand that life is so short no one has time so don't dwell like we, we don't dwell on grudges we don't hold grudges we don't hold things against other people and so if the other person is holding grudges it is especially important for them to be ready to come to you if you come to them too soon you know they they might like still harbor that grudge or hold on to that grudge and so it's not productive okay um, okay so I have a message here especially for those who are in a relationship if your partner is uh, insecure okay or you feel like oh your partner is insecure or you or you're in a relationship right and your partner thinks that your partner might think that you're talking to a lot of people that you're you're talking to somebody else that you're flirting with so-and-so that you might be stepping out on, on the relationship because uh, with the king of wands the energy is very like it's very attractive okay it's somebody that you know a lot of uh, a lot of people like okay because of their command like the, the the charisma associated with him because he's commanding because he's um, he's strong and because he looks like he's very fun and so your partner might be a little bit insecure and might even accuse you of, you know, maybe you're stepping out in the relationship. I feel like the, I guess the exalted qualities of the King of Wands is that he's a good provider. He's a caretaker. He is fiercely loyal. And Leo's, you are fiercely loyal to the people that you love. 
And so if somebody is throwing false accusation, it is best for them to come to you either way. Let them check themselves and let them, you know, ground themselves in reality before they can come back and speak to you. Okay? So either way, I feel like kind of let the other person um, drop the ball in your court. Okay? Let them drop, let them come to you. Let them drop the ball in your court and then go from there. All right? I hope this reading is helpful. The month of February is also Valentine's Day and that, um, well, in the United States. And that holiday, it's like a double-edged sword. So I hope this is not, you know, breaking through in the midst of Thanksgiving. But either way, um, I hope the reading is helpful. I hope whatever knowledge you can get out of it, that it serves you well. Um, yeah, so, you know, take it easy for this month, okay? I will talk to you guys soon. And for those who are looking for a private reading, I do have a link in the description box below for a psychic out of uh, California. Her name is Bridget. She is a phenomenal reader. I highly recommend that you get a reading with her. And um, I will talk to you guys soon. Take care of yourself, Leos. 